The Argos escaped an upset with 21 unanswered second half points against Mississippi College on Friday. West Florida is now off to their best start in the program's young history at 4-1. The test gets tougher this week with a hungry Delta State team coming to town, currently ranked number 21. We recap and look ahead, plus you'll meet senior volleyball player Rachel Neblett, who's putting together an All-American caliber season. All that and more this week on the Coach Shinnick Show on the UWF Sports Network. And welcome into the Coach Shinnick Show. Along with head coach Pete Shinnick, I'm Tommy Thrall. Thanks for being with us again this week. Well, coach, you survived a tough game against Mississippi College, but everything's kind of thrown out of whack in a game like that. You guys are moved up a day. You're playing on a Friday night. Everything just feels different, and it was all happening on short notice. No, it really did, and it was a... I, I would say strange atmosphere, uh, to say the least. You know, uh, we got guys coming from class to go to a pregame meeting, to go to a pregame meal. Uh, just a really a different uh, feel to it. Uh, very excited, though, about the crowd that we had, the people who came out, and uh, really thankful for our administration. Just short notice getting that done and then really having to tear the stadium down afterwards uh, for the storm that was coming. It was, it was unique because it seemed like everybody kind of settled in by the second half, including your team. You guys really looked a lot better in the second half. Yeah, very disappointed how we came out in the first half, but uh, give Mississippi College a tremendous amount of credit. Uh, they came ready to play. They, uh, you know, the delay or the you know the change in schedule didn't affect them at all. Uh, they were they were ready to go. It, it affected our team more, which is something we got to work on. But come the second half, uh, you know, I, I think that's what we're capable of, uh, and I think that's what you know we got to be able to play uh, week in and week out, um, you know, to be able to you know compete in this league the way we want to. Going into this game, it seemed like it had the makings of a trap, but you guys came right out and scored first. Chris Schwartz had a nice game on the ground. He did. You know, the, we we made some changes in the offensive line. Line, but Chris just continues to run better and better. Uh, you saw him right there. And then you see Anthony Johnson uh, really never give up. Whistle never blew. And, uh, you know, he ran into the pile and then bounced his way out and got his first college touchdown. Put the Argos up 7 nothing then. And then they started driving. Ty Job uh, really can get it done with his legs, can't he? No, he can. And, I mean, uh, you know, both their quarterbacks are, are pretty athletic and they do a pretty good job. And, uh, you know, right here they ran a speed option on us. They did that a couple of times. We were in man coverage, uh, which in that case makes it a little difficult. And then here they, you know, they score their second touchdown. We have blown coverage, really miscommunication. Uh, but I, I think from that point on, uh, you started to see what our defense could do. Here, uh, creating a fumble, uh, Marvin picking it up, uh, really putting ourselves in a great position, uh, give the ball back to the offense. Um, we're going to start breaking on the ball here, start of the second half, uh, Dre to comb with the interception, really the energy that we needed. We talked about that at halftime, and then uh, here we go, Chris Schwarz uh, really running in a new blocking scheme that we put in for this week. Uh, guys ran it uh, great, ran it extremely well. Austin Blake Smith catching a ball down the seam. Thought Gray threw him a really nice ball here. Uh, you know, kind of on a second down right there. And then great third down conversion right here. Antoine Griffin doing what we think he's capable of, going up, making the big play. Uh, and then Gray really should have given this. Uh, but, I mean, he pulled it and he found a way to get in the end zone. It's one of those things where we say, uh, if you're going to do that, you got to get the touchdown. <laughs> and sure enough, he did. So, uh, great, great play. Uh, Going to see Reggie Barnes here really steal the ball. Great coverage, though. Uh, you know, great call by Darian Doolin, mixing it up in the coverages, doing some man, doing some, some zone. And then, obviously, the game sealer here, fourth down. Uh, Marvin comes up huge. Uh, great, great play. And, and really just a great game for Marvin all the way around. Uh, you, didn't, you, you mentioned earlier not just – what he did defensively in that game, but also what he did on special teams as well. Yeah, he's a guy that's going to play a ton of snaps for us on defense, but then on special teams, he's the one who downed the ball, you know, downed the ball, tipped it out of the end zone, uh, you know, so that we could start that last series for, you know, them on offense at the two-yard line. Uh, he's covering kicks for us. Uh, he doesn't take a playoff, and uh, really, really impressed with how he played, and uh, we needed somebody to step up, and, and I thought he had a great game. Well, we're talking about defense. Let's stay on the defense. It, it, it seems like the defense has really kind of become one of the strengths 
of this team. Now, sure, they're going to see a great test this week in Delta State. We'll talk about that later on. But but when you look at the defense of this team, uh, they pitched a shutout in the second half. You really have to be happy with what you saw out of them in that game in particular. E extremely pleased. And really, I think except for a couple of plays in the first half, I thought, uh, you know, when you go back and watch it on film, they played better than, uh, you know, I thought in the first half. Um, we were, you know, very opportunistic uh, where we needed to be. Uh, the second half, obviously, you know, getting the turnovers that we did, but to go, uh, you know, four turnovers on the game, that's huge. Puts us back in the plus category now. Uh, on the season uh, really love what our defense is doing and you know as you mentioned I mean this week they're going to have to continue to get better continue to grow and play at a very high level talk about the offense now it, it, it's tough when you don't have your starting quarterback you've got to use two guys that haven't played a lot how did you assess how Gray and Kalu did well you, you know they, they found a way to win the game and, you know, really, we didn't turn the ball over, uh, and we were able to drive when we needed to. Uh, we had the short field on the one, which helped us, but really put together two really nice drives. Um, and then two nice drives that didn't result in points, missed some long field goals, but we still were able to move the ball. Uh, when you start a new quarterback, sometimes uh, he's just got to go through some of the learning experience that the other guy already knows. Uh, and we're out there and we're watching, you know, Gray and Kalu do some things that we know Mike wouldn't have done. We got to find a way to get that guy, you know, more prepared for that next opportunity. Um, but we felt like we left a lot out on the field uh, and things that, you know, that we've just got to get better at. The offensive line really looked like took some big strides in that game. Really saw some holes open up for Schwartz and Johnson. Uh, you made some changes up front going into that game how did you feel about those after you saw them in action oh, it felt really good and I think you know the running game was because of the changes that we made and I think we've got the guys in the right position now moving forward um, you know we got a little more size on the inside uh, with Tamara Collier moving in there and then I think we got somebody a little more uh, athletic playing tackle uh, with Cliff Fleming and so uh, I think that helped both in the pass game and in the run game and something that we're going to need moving forward. All right sounds good well we've got a big one against Delta State we'll look at that one when we come back a little bit later on. Well when we come back actually Marvin Conley who had the play of the game he's going to be in here with us and we've got plenty more coming up on the Coach Shinnick Show on the UWF Sports Network. We are not here to drift. We were born to move to change, to jump in, dive deep, make waves, break through. We were born to splash. The University of West Florida is America's best university for making a splash. The University of West Florida. How will you make a splash? Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. We can stop to make sure someone is okay. Get in the way and disrupt the situation. Notify an authority. Or walk them home safely. We can change the language around rape. We can make campuses safer for our teammates, our friends, and our classmates. We cannot be bystanders. Taking action isn't always easy, but it's on, on us, us to intervene. Because we can. Learn more and take the pledge at itsonus.org. The world is our ocean, and we are here to make a splash, to dive deep, to create, to develop, to break through. At the University of West Florida, there's no limit to how you can make a splash. Don't just sit on shore, jump in. The University of West Florida, how will you make a splash? We will never settle for the kiddie pool. We are destined for the vast ocean of opportunities that await us. We were born to make a splash. At the University of West Florida, you can make a discovery, make a difference, 
make a splash. So take a deep breath and dive in. The University of West Florida. How will you make a splash? Welcome back to the Coach Shinnick Show. The national champion Argo tennis team was celebrated at Friday night's football game. There was a slight change of plans with the game being moved up because of Hurricane Nate. The event was scheduled for Friday night at Seville Quarter. Despite the change of plans, it was an excellent celebration of the tennis program's fourth national title and second in four years. This is what we dreamed of all season, and you know you got to have a lot of things go right for this to happen. They were playing for each other, and that was kind of the difference. Um, you know, win or lose, we we felt like we were playing for something greater than ourselves. Argy the Argonaut got some student athletes out in the community last week to read to some area elementary school students at Oriole Beach Elementary. Dominique Whitehurst has more. Baseball, softball, and cheerleading were all represented last Wednesday. They spent the morning reading and playing games as part of Argy's reading and recess program. The Argos will be making stops all over the area during the school year to help promote literacy and an active lifestyle in our youth. The event was a huge hit with the kids in Gulf Breeze. We have the UWF student athletes coming out for reading and recess. They're uh, read to the students and talked about some of the skills we're practicing, like compare and contrast. They told a little bit about themselves and why they love UWF and what positions they play and what sports they play in. And then they brought us out for recess to throw the ball around and kick the ball with us. Argo senior volleyball player Rachel Neblett has been a key piece to Melissa Walters' team over her four years, but now in her senior year, she's been exceptional. <laughs> Rachel Neblett is having a career year to this point. She leads the league in hitting percentage and is second in points while also sitting in the top six in kills and blocks, all of which makes her the cornerstone of a special unit for Melissa Walters' 2017 squad. She's elevated herself into a, being a leader in this program, and I think when you're a leader, you hold yourself to a higher standard. Senior year, it's all about living up to potential, whether it's for me, for my teammates, just as a team in general. Um, and there's always that added uh, pressure of this is my last year. She's handled it well with a focus that hasn't gone unnoticed by her coach. This year, she's just on a mission. You know, she knows what she wants, and she is not afraid to continue to uh, grow her game and get after it every night, but she's treating every practice, every match as its own separate entity. I'm not messing around anymore, uh, taking care of business kind of a thing. You know, when you're young, when you're immature, you, you might not appreciate the opportunities you have as much, but um, now that it's my senior year, I, I wish I <laughs> had this um, epiphany earlier in my career. She's grown into the prototypical Argo volleyball player, but Neblet and her fellow seniors have plenty more they want to accomplish. She's just unbelievably loyal to our program. You know, she is that player that when I address the team, you know, looks you in the eye, nods her head. She just is 100% completely, totally bought into what we're about. It's my last year, it's Katie's last year, it's Mo's last year, and we have this, this tradition of winning at UWF that we really want to um, take on our back and really run with. Neblet and the Argos are currently ranked number 23 nationally. They will be in Birmingham for the regional crossover this weekend. Switching back to football, the Argos have been scooping up GSC weekly honors consistently this season. This week is no different. After totaling eight tackles, a fumble recovery, and the biggest of all, a game-clinching 97-yard pick six, junior Marvin Conley has earned himself GSC Defensive Player of the Week. He joins us now in studio. Marvin, thanks so much for being here. How you been? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm, I'm doing really well. You should be great after a weekend like you had oh, last course, weekend. Take us through the pick six. We got to start there. What was that like for you? Man, you know, big fourth down. We're there on the about two yard line, ready to punch it in to go to overtime. And Coach Doolin calls it um, zero coverage. So we're going to bring a little heat and we're going to press him up. So Trent Archie gets to the quarterback, makes him roll out. Quarterback flips the ball over his head. Not, not sure what he was thinking. <laughs> uh, yeah, but the ball is floating in the air and I run underneath it. After that, I just seen the green light and that, and that was about all. Well, well, after, you, after you make the catch, did you realize, hey, I'm gone and nobody's going to catch me? Or, or, or what did you see at that point? Well, when I made the catch, the quarterback was on the ground, like a little bit in front of me. And once I went around him, I was like, wow, I'm actually, it's, it's, I'm gone. Like, <laughs> there's no one else around me. Never slowed down, never no. broke stride. You had four of those picks last year. Uh, I'm guessing this one felt just a little bit different. Oh, yeah. Pick six, first um, touchdown in my college career. So good. It was, it was pretty amazing. 
Talk about the defense this year because it seems like you guys have really taken a huge leap forward this season. Last year it was the offense that kind of carried this team. This year the defense is kind of the strength of this squad. What's different? Uh, you know, I mean, it's the play calling, us executing. We have a few different players. Still have um, people that came back from last year. And we're all just, we got better. Our offseason was great. And um, when Coach Doolin gives us the calls, we go out there and execute them 100%. And when we do that, it's, it's, it's hard to beat us. Well, you guys, you guys certainly have a tough test this week. Delta State coming to town. Uh, I don't have to tell you what they've accomplished oh, yeah. this year. So, so when you look at them from a defensive perspective, what stands out the most? Uh, you know, Delta State is a great team, man. They have a good offense. It's more about us stopping the run game. But um, I, I trust Coach Doolin and, and what he's got going for us this week. And like I said, once we execute all that 100%, man, it's going to be hard for, for anyone in the country to beat us. I, I'm sure you looked at the game film from last week, and, and West Al did an excellent job to slow down yeah. their run game. What did they do? What was effective in slowing yeah, that, them down? Yeah, um, I checked that film out. It was a great game, actually. And um, I seen that West Al like, brought the pressure to them. They shut the run game completely down and, and made them beat them with the quarterback. All right, Marvin. Well, good luck this week. I know it's going to be a good test, all right? Yes, sir. All Appreciate right. it. Plenty more still to get to. Plus, we welcome back in head coach Pete Shinnick to preview that Delta State game. When we come back, this is the Coach Shinnick Show on the UWF Sports Network. Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's, will you? The world is our ocean, and we are here to make a splash, to dive deep, to create, to develop to break through. At the University of West Florida, there's no limit to how you can make a splash. Don't just sit on shore, jump in. The University of West Florida. How will you make a splash? We are not here to drift. We were born to move, to change, to jump in, dive deep, make waves, break through. We were born to splash. The University of West Florida is America's best university for making a splash. The University of West Florida. How will you make a splash? We can stop to make sure someone is okay. Get in the way and disrupt the situation. Codify an authority. Or walk them home safely. We can change the language around rape. We can make campuses safer for our teammates, our friends, and our classmates. We cannot be bystanders. Taking action isn't always easy, but it's on, on us, us to intervene. Because we can. Learn more and take the pledge at itsonus.org. We will never settle for the kiddie pool. We are destined for the vast ocean of opportunities that await us. We were born to make a splash. At the University of West Florida, you can make a discovery, make a difference, make a splash. So take a deep breath and dive in. The University of West Florida. How will you make a splash? The Argos are 4-1 and one as they enter the gauntlet of the schedule with three of the final five games being played against ranked teams. Delta State is up first. And we welcome back in Argo head coach Pete Chinnick to discuss the Statesman. Boy, it, it's a tough finish to this schedule uh, in, in North Alabama. Not ranked right now, but they're in there as well. This is a team that's been hot. Of course, they were the national runner-ups. I mean, how do you really kind of get your team ready at this point of the schedule? Well, that's why you got to work really hard early on in the season to be in position, uh, you know, to make these games count. 
And, you know, very proud of our team, again, finding ways to win, uh, finding ways to continue to get better. Um, you know, I've been telling our guys, I don't know that we've played our best game yet, and uh, hopefully we haven't, uh, so that we can, you know, improve and, and play a great opponent in Delta State. Uh, Delta came out hot this year and really have, have stayed with it. Um, you know, the West Al loss, uh, what's probably the most impressive thing is, is they were down uh, but kept fighting and really had an opportunity late in the game uh, to win the game. And, uh, you know, very impressed with what we see on film and uh, know that we're going to get a great team coming in here on Saturday. They're a top 25 team, 23 to be exact, coming into this week. Uh, last week's loss was tough. They lost by three, 29-26. You mentioned that. Does that make them more dangerous, a team that good coming off a loss? Well, I think so, especially when you look at how they lost it because they probably should be going to overtime. They have a very good kicker. He missed a field goal late in the game uh, and not a long one. I mean, something that I think he's very capable of uh, doing. Uh, you know, I think they're going to come in hungry. I think they're going to come in, uh, you know, really ready to go to get back, uh, you know, to where they think they are. They really kind of control their own destiny at this point in time. So uh, we're going to, we're going to, you know, we're going to be in for a great game. We got to be up for it. They seem like they're better. I mean, we haven't seen them yet, but they seem like they're improved over last year. What makes this team better? Well, the number one thing is their defense. Uh, last year, um, you know, a lot of people were scoring. And I mean, just give me an idea. You know, they played Mississippi College last year. Uh, it was 60 to 30. <laughs> you know, they played us. I mean, we, we scored a lot of points. Uh, no one's done that. Uh, against them this year um, and you, you know they've they've improved on defense they're playing much smarter uh, they're you know they're in position and they're really taking away a lot of things and uh, to hold the West Al offense really in check for most of the game is a great accomplishment because that's one of the better offenses in the league so how do you pick their defense apart Got to be got to be great at what we're doing and, uh, you know, excited about our game plan and uh, what we're looking at. But, uh, you know, just really got to be great in executing it. There's uh, very little room for error. Uh, and, you know, they they give you some things, uh, but you got to almost be perfect to take them. And so uh, we're really challenging our guys with, you know, taking advantage of every opportunity that they get and making the most of it. The defense is going to be tested this week as well. Chris Johnson, their running back is just behind Antoine Haynes of FIT. So how do you slow him down well uh, Chris is as good a running back as we have seen in two years uh, and I mean he plays as well as anybody and their O line is as big as any O line that we'll see so uh, you know last year uh, for the most part I thought we bottled them up uh, but we gave up some things that I think we got to clean up this year in order to be able to uh, be in the game all right well now the questions get tough they come from the audience he will answer your questions when we come back. This is the Coach Shinnick Show on the UWF Sports Network. We can stop to make sure someone is okay. Get in the way and disrupt the situation. Codify an authority. Or walk them home safely. We can change the language around rape. We can make campuses safer for our teammates, our friends, and our classmates. We cannot be bystanders. Taking action isn't always easy, but it's on, on us. us. To intervene. Because we can. Learn more and take the pledge at itsonus.org. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. We are not here to drift. We were born to move, to change, to jump in, dive deep, make waves, break through. We were born to splash. The University of West Florida is America's best university for making a splash. The University of West Florida. How will you make a splash? The world is our ocean, and we are here to make a splash. To dive deep. To create. To develop. To break through. At the University of West Florida, there's no limit to how you can make a splash. Don't just sit on shore, jump in. The University of West Florida.
how will you make a splash? Welcome back to the Coach Shinnick Show. Now is the point where we get to your questions. But before we get started, like we do every week, i got to ask about the health of the team. Is Mike Bodry going to be back this week, and how's everybody else doing? Yeah, I think we're getting closer. Uh, Mike uh, has practiced this week, so, uh, I mean, he'll be the starter going into the game and excited to get him back again. Uh, took the right precautions last week, and, you know, we were able to find a way to get a victory without him, so uh, excited to have him back. All right, very good. Well, uh, let's get to it. You can, of course, Submit your questions if you've got some for Coach Shinnick. Go to goargos.com and click on the button that says Ask the Coach. So we get started today. William in Pensacola is first up, and he wants to know your feelings on screenplays. He certainly liked the one that Chris Schwartz went, uh, ran that went for big yards. So uh, how do you feel about screens? Love screens and always looking, and it, really it's a constant discussion uh, that you have. And I think, you know, uh, when we pull them out, we expect to get big plays out of them. Uh, we've pulled them out a couple of times and gotten some good yardage at them. Uh, they're not something that, you know, is every fifth play for us or something like that. Um, you know, last year we threw a lot of quick screens and stuff to our wide receivers. People have really taken that away, which I think has allowed, you know, our running game to open up a little more as well. Uh, how do you choose when the right time is to run that? And, and is there a certain yardage that you think those work best in? Well, you're always looking, you know, they're, they're, they're a typical third down play, sometimes a second and long. Uh, but at the same time, it's really more of where is the defense and how are they aligning uh, to you? And can you get the look that you're trying to get? All right, Stephen in Merritt Island has a great question for you. We've talked a lot about it before. I don't know that we've ever actually talked about it on the air. But he wants to know, uh, what did your dad teach you about coaching? Do you have any words of wisdom that stand out in your mind from him? Well, yeah, I mean, he, t he taught me a lot, and really um, a lot of it was just kind of through discussions and through conversations about different aspects, um, you know, but uh, really probably the majority of my coaching philosophy comes uh, from him. How you're going to treat people, uh, you, know, what, uh, you know, what aspects of a player, uh, you know, you can control and then where they have to get better. Um, I, I got a lot from him. We could probably do two or three shows from that. <laughs> uh, you know, main thing, though, is, you know, keep it simple uh, when you're explaining things to people and, you know, make sure that they understand. Uh, a player that doesn't know what he's doing can't help you. That's awesome. Well, Pete, thanks so much. Always a good time. Before we leave you, uh, we want to thank you again for watching us and want to remind you of what's going on on campus. It's going to be a busy weekend. Both men's and women's soccer are at home this weekend at the pitch. Don't forget, you can go to GoArgos.com for the complete schedule. The Argo football team is at home this weekend. They're taking on Delta State. Kickoff is set for 4 o'clock. Pre-game is, is set for 3.30 on Choice 106.9 FM, WRNE 980. Of course, you can watch the game as well on Blab TV. For head coach Pete Shinnick and our entire crew, I'm Tommy Thrall. Thanks for watching.